Marvel's What If comics are known to range from anywhere from straight up wacky to just extremely dark, and sometimes both. Just look at the What If where Thanos joined the Avengers. Yeah, you heard that right. But alas, that strange and dark comic is a tale for another day. Because today, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 scariest What If stories to come out of Marvel. So. Pull up your blankets and hit the lights, cause it's time to get scary! Number 10, Iron Man, Traitor? At number 10, our first frightening tale asks the question, what if Iron Man had been a traitor? In this twist on Iron Man's incredible origin story, everything didn't turn out as great. Instead of standing tall in his new suit of armor and avenging Professor Yinsen, Tony lay still unable to move. Finding him like this, and alongside his new invention, Stark's captors decide to spare his life and send him back to America as their spy. Stark obviously hates this, but is left without a choice when his captors add a remote-controlled device into his armor, one that could instantly kill him with the press of a button. It isn't until Nick Fury gets suspicious and asks Reed Richards to look into the latest superhero, Iron Man, that people begin to suspect something is wrong. And after some research, Reed realizes Fury was right. Iron Man is a spy. Though there's an eventual happy ending, this comic shows just how terrifying and dangerous Tony Stark as a spy would be. With someone like him, who controls one of America's largest businesses, has access to confidential documents, and is a member of Earth's Mightiest, his captors would have struck gold. Meanwhile, poor Tony would betray everyone he knows and loves just to keep on living. Number 9. Spider-Man – Back in Black up next at number 9, this post-Civil War comic switches up the storyline that created the controversial One More Day storyline. What if Mary Jane had been shot instead of Aunt May? The answer? We get a Spider-Man who's finally lost it. Upon learning that the Kingpin was the one behind the mercenary who pulled the trigger, Peter dons his black suit. And despite Aunt May's pleading, he goes on a hunt for the criminal mastermind. Knowing what's coming for him, the Kingpin calls on Iron Man in his recently created Superhuman Registration Act to protect him from the wall crawler. But not even Stark can stop Spidey, who is now beyond angry, especially with Iron Man and S.H.I.E.L.D. protecting his wife's killer. Literally beating the armor off of Stark, Peter comes face to face with the Kingpin, who's holding Aunt May at gunpoint. However, the webhead isn't having any of it and ends the whole thing with a single punch that goes right through the Kingpin. Getting his revenge on the man who killed his wife, Spidey hands himself over to the cops, ending this chilling what if. Moral of the story, do not piss Spider-Man off, otherwise you'll have a very angry, super-powered individual hunting you down. In all seriousness, it's absolutely petrifying to see a hero like Spider-Man finally lose it and give up on his usual morals, all the while donning his much more menacing black suit. Just imagine if Peter always acted like this. The crime rate in New York would drop significantly. If you think that's terrifying, just you wait. It only gets scarier from here. But before we get to that, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload. And smash that like button for some plot armor today. Number 8. X-Men Deadly Genesis at our number 8 spot, we've got the event that shook up the X-Men called Deadly Genesis, also known as the event that introduced the third Summers brother, Vulcan. As a member of Moira McTaggart's small group of mutant students, Vulcan and his students Petra, Sway, and Darwin were sent to the sentient island of Krakoa in hopes of rescuing the captive X-Men. In the original event, this entire team was brutally massacred. However, this what if tells a different story. In this alternate universe, Vulcan and his team made it to Krakoa. But due to a sudden explosion, the X-Men all perished, leaving Cyclops as the only survivor, having been rescued by Vulcan and his team beforehand. 
After the mourning of the X-Men, Vulcan quickly began to rise in popularity, becoming the so-called world's greatest hero. This sounds great and all, but everything quickly comes crashing down when the previously lost island of Krakoa is found. And on it is some pretty damning evidence. Thanks to Sway, the time-influencing mutant, Xavier, Cyclops, and the rest of Vulcan's team were able to witness what actually went down that day. You see, it wasn't the explosion that killed the X-Men, but Vulcan. After finding the team of X-Men all alone, Vulcan struck, but ended up accidentally killing Jean Grey. Blinded by guilt, Vulcan killed the remaining witnesses as well. Not only that, but when the mutant is confronted with the truth by his former allies, he wastes no time trying to kill them as well. Knowing that they can't just lock Vulcan up, his teammates and Xavier craft the perfect prison for him. After having the part of his brain that controls his powers shut off, Vulcan is stranded on Krakoa within a never-ending time loop. And every time he wants to go get his weekly ration of food, Vulcan has to witness the incident from all those years ago. Talk about dark. The scariest part about this whole comic is that it ends with Vulcan questioning just how many times he has to watch the X-Men's deaths by his hands before he stops feeling anything. For someone as powerful as Vulcan, that is a terrifying thing to say. Number 7. Namor, the Submariner Coming in at number 7, we see how a single detail completely changes everything about a character. MCU fans who have watched the latest installment of Black Panther Wakanda Forever know just how loyal Neymar is to his land and his people. But what if Prince Neymar of Atlantis grew up on land? Instead of becoming an incredible warrior of Atlantis, Neymar joins the American army, joining the original Human Torch to become the world's first superheroes. The duo fought endless battles together and even considered each other family. However, tragedy struck when Torch was hit, falling into the ocean below and going missing. It's 30 years later that the government picks up some sort of radio signal, repeating the Human Torch's last word, Namor. Following the signal to the deep sea, Namor finds the land of his mother Atlantis. Only it's now under the control of a group of half-human half, half-Atlantean half Nazis. Claiming that they have reached true ancestral purity, this group of survivors has enslaved the rest of the Atlanteans and is planning to use the Human Torch's body as a bomb against the surface world. Of course, Namor can't allow this and starts a revolt against the Nazi forces alongside his fellow Atlanteans. When he tries to snap the torch out of it, he realizes it's too late. Through an earpiece, the president tells him to throw torch towards Atlantis, erasing the city. But Namor has other plans, taking the human torch's body high into the air where he explodes without any danger. Going back underwater, Namor goes to hug his grandfather when suddenly a remote controlled explosive goes off destroying the city and seemingly killing everyone. The American president made a choice, ordering the strike, claiming that a rebellious Namor is simply too dangerous to keep around. However, as we learn, Namor lives. And as Atlantis's sole survivor, he's ready to get revenge. Namor had always had a vicious hatred for the surface world, but what makes this comic truly terrifying is the fact that he was betrayed and is now the last of his people. Namor has lost everything and definitely has a justifiable reason to attack. As the saying goes, there's nothing more dangerous than someone who's got nothing left to lose. Number 6. Wolverine vs. Spider-Man At the number 6 spot, we've got the What If comic that created one of the most spine-chilling Spider-Man variants in the Spider-Verse, dubbed Assassin Spider-Man by fans. Stemming from the infamous storyline where Peter accidentally killed a woman, this comic's divergence comes when we question, what if Peter hadn't gotten on his plane home? Instead, 
Peter is given a chance to redeem his mistake by rescuing Alex, a captive CIA agent, from the hands of the KGB. Though this is not exactly a friendly neighborhood adventure, Peter takes the chance, and it's here that he once again accidentally ends a life. This time, it's Crimson Dynamo of Russia's Winter Guard. Not realizing that the suit had lost power, Spidey throws a punch at full strength, snapping the person's neck and instantly killing them. Though visibly shocked by his actions, Pete focuses on the mission, rushing in to rescue the CIA agent. Afterwards, Spidey decides to stay with Wolverine, Alex, and Nebo, who train him to unlock an even more advanced version of his spider sense. So much so that Peter can know your next move before you do. Together, the four of them worked to cut down the Black Ops world while also keeping Alex safe from her assailants. It was during this time that Spidey finally gave up his no-kill rule, believing that some people deserved death, installing a new gun chamber to his recognizable web shooters. After about a year of living on the run with his group, Spidey made a decision, setting up a deal between S.H.I.E.L.D., Russian forces, and his group. Watched over by S.H.I.E.L.D., the corrupt Nebo was taken into custody by the Russians in exchange for Alex. And with Nick Fury's power, the group, now reduced to just three, were declared free people. With that freedom, the trio only went on to cause more trouble in the worldwide criminal underworld. But that's a story for another day. Nonetheless, this version of Peter Parker's Spider-Man is just straight up creepy and terrifying. Without his no-kill rule and his improved Spidey sense, PD is on another level and free from any of his past restraints. And with someone like Wolverine as his teacher, there is no knowing what this version of the web slinger is learning from this mutant. Hopefully nothing that will make him even scarier than he is. Number 5. Astonishing X-Men Halfway through our list at the number 5 spot, we've got a tale that, though absolutely horrifying, is sort of sweet. This appalling what-if story asks the question, what if Danger was the wife of Ultron? When the X-Men Danger Room revealed that she was sentient to the team and attacked them, the group of mutants had no way of taking her down. However, in this version, Danger took it one step further, sending out a message to all sentient AI across the planet. Ultron hears her call and sees her as someone worthy to be his new wife. Ultron flies off towards the home of the X-Men. The robot manages to arrive on the scene just in time to see Danger defeat all of them. In some sick way, it's love at first sight for the two AIs. Ultron even proves his love for Danger by killing the remaining mutant students. Showing Danger that the two of them are the same, Ultron links their matrices into each other's databases, sharing intelligence. It's safe to say the remaining X-Men are royally screwed, as Danger herself says, You're no longer facing a danger room. You are in danger. With that, all but one X-Men remains. Professor X. Once again, calling out to all AI life, Danger and Ultron awaken a disturbing, half-destroyed Alpha Omega Sentinel that's been lying dormant on the destroyed island of Genosha. Responding to what it calls Mother, the Sentinel flies over to Danger and Ultron, with Xavier in hand as a gift. Killing him and effectively cutting off the past, Danger and Ultron climb aboard their monstrous Sentinel child. Together, the three soar off into the great unknowns of space, preparing to spread their dominion across the galaxy. And so, Marvel's most terrifying and possibly greatest power couple is born. Though absolutely terrifying, this what if is all about love in the end. And hey, it's still a better love story than Twilight. Number 4. World War Hulk Next on our list is the incredible yet terrifying World War Hulk event. Only this version of the beloved event is much, much darker. After all, this version asks the question, what if the heroes lost? Interestingly though, it's not the Hulk that the heroes lose to, but instead another green creature, or better yet, creatures. 
That's right, we're talking about the invading scrolls. And as per usual, it's all Tony Stark's fault. In an attempt to put an end to the Hulk, Iron Man calls in an enormous and powerful satellite ray. The only issue is that he failed to calculate what the combined powers of those satellites could do to those within their radius. As such, New York City is entirely destroyed. The land itself becomes radioactive. As for all the heroes who were at the battle scene when the blast went off, dead within seconds. To make matters worse, within just a few months, the scrolls had taken over nearly the entire planet. Without Earth's mightiest, it wasn't too hard of a feat. And that's just the start of this terrifying scenario. Searching for backup, the Vision, one of the few heroes still alive, finds Bruce Banner in the ruins of New York City, somehow not dead. Though Banner swears off fighting and wishes to die in peace within the radiation-filled city, Vision changes things when he shows him what's happening across the planet. With the Hulk now joining their cause, the remaining heroes and the small human population they're protecting slowly begin to reclaim their planets and rally together more superhumans. It's then that the scroll leader decides to activate one of his last sleeper agents. In the midst of Hulk's speech to the thousands they've gathered, Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, and the leader of this entire revolution pulls her husband, Hank Pym, away for a moment, revealing she's a scroll. Then, by injecting him with some sort of chemical weapon, the scroll essentially turns Hank into a ticking time bomb. When he explodes, he takes everyone along with him, putting a stop to the rebellion and pretty much ending the human race. Once again, only one man survives the explosion, and that's the Hulk. Distraught and without any allies or even human beings, Bruce calls the Silver Surfer, demanding that Galactus come to Earth and consume it. In this universe, Earth is entirely destroyed, and Hulk becomes the newest herald of Galactus. All memories of his home planet voluntarily erased from the start to the very end of this what if. We see the horrifying after effects of just a few choices. This leads to a majority of heroes and then humanity dying. If that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. Number 3. Wolverine, Enemy of the State Breaking into our final three scariest stories, at the number three spot, we've got the comic that asks, what if Wolverine was never deprogrammed? This version of Wolverine is still under the control of Hydra and the Hand, becoming their murder machine. After killing tons of fellow heroes, friends, and even family, Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. decide to make their final stand against the mutants. Handpicking from the few remaining heroes, Captain America creates a team capable of taking Logan down himself. The Invisible Woman, Magneto, and Kitty Pride. Arriving at an old abandoned shield base, Captain America goes over the plan one more time with his team. The base only has one entrance, so Kitty will stay as a guard, phasing halfway through the door, waiting for Wolverine to arrive. From there, Sue will contain Logan within her force fields, and with Magneto creating an electromagnetic field, Hydra won't be able to teleport Wolverine around. Seeing as how Cap's already gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with brainwashed Wolvie, a battle where he lost both a leg and an arm, he'll serve as bait. With that, the plan is set, and everyone rushes to their positions. But nothing goes as expected. As Kitty Pride says, As soon as it started, everything became a blur. We were screwed from the start. You see, instead of coming through the only door in the complex, Logan actually dug his way under the base and attacked the heroes from below, taking the invisible woman out first. After seeing this, Cap rushes out to battle, but Magneto insists on fighting Logan instead, dropping the force field. 
For a minute, it looks as if Magneto actually has this handled, using the adamantium in Logan's body to suspend him in the air. But with the force field down, there's nothing to stop Hydra from teleporting Logan, teleporting Wolverine out of Magneto's range and back in. With a swift stab to the chest, Magneto falls. After watching Captain America receive just as violent a death as the rest of the team, Kitty Pride, the sole survivor, tries to bring Wolverine back to his senses. Eventually, seeing that there's no other option available, Kitty faces her entire arm through Logan's brain and solidifies. Knowing he'll heal if she takes her arm out, Kitty uses Wolverine's claws to cut her arm clean off leaving it embedded in his skull. As Nick Fury says at the end of the issue, war does ugly things to people. Wolverine becoming a brainwashed agent of Hydra was bad enough in the original storyline, but this reality shows us just how terrifying the mutant can be when not in control. I mean, he managed to kill just about every major hero in the Marvel Universe. Number 2. Bruce Banner the monster? Up next at number 2, we've got the comic that asks, what if Bruce Banner was the monster and his alter ego was really the man? In this alternate universe, Bruce is not only a scientist but also a colonel in the American army. And as per usual, Banner gets hit with his own gamma bomb while rushing out to stop Rick Jones. Only in this version, he doesn't try to save the teen, but to stop him from interfering with his testing. Upon getting hit with the radiation, Rick immediately died, but Banner somehow survived. And after some time in the hospital, he made a full recovery. Everything seems to be going well for Banner. There's no Hulk to wrestle with. He and Betty just got married and he's still working within the military, maintaining his high-ranked position. But slowly. That starts to unravel as his true colors start to show. He's borderline abusive towards Betty, too obsessed with his work and always angry. In fact, he's acting exactly as his abusive dad used to. Seemingly triggered by that trauma, Banner has his first transformation. Not into the Hulk we know, but instead a humanoid, green, blinding light. Immediately, the army begins to shoot at him, but Starman, as he's dubbed, simply stands there in shock, asking, why are you hurting me? Stop it. Please. Eventually, this creature flies away and transforms back into Bruce with no recollection of the transformation. As time goes on, Bruce becomes more violent as he hunts down this Starman. And due to his anger and trauma, Starman appears more and more often. It becomes clear that Starman is the innocent little boy while Bruce is the product of his father's abuse. After realizing this and understanding that he is Starman, Bruce manipulates his alter ego to achieve his own goals. Knowing that he's claustrophobic, Banner boards a submarine with a ticking time bomb. He then transforms into Starman, just in time for the bomb to go off, killing hundreds. Afterwards, Starman is found to be a terrorist, somehow connected to the Middle East. And with that, the war Banner has always wanted begins. Each warplane carries his now perfected Gamma Warheads. Betty, who is done with Bruce's constant abuse while feeling sympathetic for his alter ego, places herself in protective custody. In a meeting with the on-site therapist, Dr. Samson, Betty reveals everything. From Starman's true identity to the domestic violence she faces. Ending their session, Samson goes to write up an official investigation on Colonel Banner regarding the abuse of his wife. However, when he enters his office, he finds Banner there, waiting for him. It's here that Bruce gives Samson an ultimatum. Either he drops the whole investigation and commits his so-called sick wife to a mental hospital, or Banner will send him out as a therapist on the front lines. And so, this dark and terrifying story ends with Bruce flying out to the battlefield while Betty is transported to a mental ward. The Hulk is terrifying normally, but this version of the character shows us how truly horrifying puny Banner can be. With domestic abuse, a manufactured war, and abuse of power, 
Colonel Banner really is the monster here, dragging the poor little boy inside of him through everything. Number 1. The Fantastic Four's Second Child On that chilling note, we've reached our final entry on this list. The story that asks, what if the Fantastic Four's second child lived? From the title alone, this story sounds like a happy one, but believe us when we say it is bone chilling. One night, Franklin Richards, Reed and Sue's first child, has a horrible nightmare that a monster will infect their family and kill everyone. Though his parents reassure him that nothing of that sort exists or will ever happen, Franklin whispers to himself that it's already started and the monster is slowly growing inside Sue's pregnant stomach. Franklin's suspicions only worsen when his mother gets visibly weaker with each passing day of pregnancy. Eventually, even after gathering the greatest group of scientists, Sue Storm Richards dies during childbirth, but against all odds, her newborn manages to survive. Naming her Sue after her mother, the child gets as much of a normal childhood as she can when you're the daughter of Mr. Fantastic. But still, Franklin distances himself from his sister, telling others in the family to do the same. Sadly, none of them listen, and one by one, they all die, just as Franklin's mother did. With these events, Franklin tries to appeal to his dad, showing him that those around Sue, or as the family calls her, Susie, all end up contracting the same disease his mother had before eventually being drained of their life and tragically dying. It's not only the F4 and family, but Franklin has proof of Susie's teachers and classmates also falling victim to his sister's supposed curse and monstrous nature. Mr. Fantastic just brushes this off as excess radiation from the F4's incident all those years ago. After Ben Grimm's death, Reed still refuses to believe his son or even give him a chance to explain. And with no other choices, Franklin meets with Dr. Doom, alerting him of the threat his sister could potentially pose to the world. Hearing the kid out, Doom has a talk with his arch nemesis and sees that most of Franklin's notes have proven to be true. Reed does indeed look drained and tired. Not only that, but he's acting extremely out of character and being quite aggressive. After some bickering between the rivals, Susie reveals herself to the trio of geniuses, proving Franklin right after all those years of suspicion. However, it's too late, as she's already drained Mr. Fantastic of his life force. Giving Franklin time to escape, Doom attempts to take the creature on, but she too easily defeats him feeding on his life force as well. Franklin eventually manages to put an end to this monster when he tricks her into jumping right through the negative zone portal, shutting it down for good and leaving her stranded there. Though he won the battle, Franklin has ultimately lost as he is left without any living family or friends. Susie, or the monster disguised as her, having killed them all. If only Reed had listened to his son. Though this story is more than horrifying, it goes a step further when you consider that it's entirely possible that Sue could have been a normal little girl. However, unknowingly using his mutant reality-altering powers, Franklin could be the reason she became a monster. In the infinite Marvel multiverse, there are probably scarier what-if stories out there. Let us know. Did we miss any stories? Is there a comic here that's got you creeped out and scared? As always, we here at Plot Armor Comics love hearing your thoughts and opinions, almost as much as we love presenting these stories to you. This has been Anthony Fan, and I will catch you in the next video.